Okay. So, I'd like to, I'd like to welcome everyone uh, this morning. My name is Andras Pinter, and uh, I represent uh, a couple of things here. Um, an organization, uh, the, Europe, uh, the Hungarian Skeptic Society, as well as the European Skeptics Podcast. Um, and I'd like to welcome uh, two of my colleagues uh, with whom I, I do that work uh, with the European Skeptics uh, Podcast, po uh, Jelena and Pontus. But, but it's, not, it's not only the European Skeptics Podcast that I'd like to talk, it, uh, talk to you about. Um, first of all, I, I'd like to thank the organizers of the 17th European Skeptics Congress for, for um, making this event happen. I'm really happy to be here and see all those faces from all those different countries. Um, that, that level of diversity is very heartwarming and it's, it's very good to see. And <laughs> Okay, I, I've, I've only got 15 minutes. <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So, uh, my question is, what the hell are we doing here? Why are we here in the first place? Of course, uh, every second year, we come together to exchange ideas, experiences, whatever we've gone through uh, in the last two years, learn something about the, the latest research on certain topics. Uh, we have experts giving talks, and, um, and that, that I, 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 I like to call an ammunition that we can use in the, in the, in the everyday fight against stupidity and pseudoscience and, and, and all those weird claims. Um, of course, we are also here to tell, us, uh, to tell um, uh, one another about our latest challenges and successes and act activities. And, uh, of course, to socialize. Um, whoever was present in the pub yesterday and the day, day before uh, know, knows what I'm talking about. And, oh, um, unfortunately, probably that is why I see empty, empty seats. <laughs> um, so, the, the question is, if we are already here as an, in an international, on an international conference, uh, why is it important for us to go international? Why isn't it enough to do this in our own home countries, uh, in our own languages? Because uh, we are so diverse, not only culturally, but linguistically. We, have, we speak many, many different languages, and all we try to do here <laughs> uh, during this weekend is to try to communicate in a common language with English, which is a, a good thing to have. However, um, the pseudoscience, first of all, uh, doesn't respect borders, obviously. Uh, we can, we can uh, name a couple of examples, like uh, the anti-vaccination movement, which is truly international, unfortunately. Uh, the anti-GMO movement uh, is, is very similar in that regard. Uh, the advance of homeopathy all over Europe. Um, obviously, I, I'd like to focus on European uh, actions, but this is a European Skeptics Congress, so uh, it might be something that is acceptable. And the chemtrails, the global warming denial, is in the advance as well. So, the problem is that on, in, on a European level, some ideas get even legislative, uh, legislative support, um, on an, a, a, not on a national, but a European level, an EU level. So, EU legislation some, somehow, sometimes, from time to time, really uh, opens up the door for, uh, for all those weird ideas to, to really spread without any kind of, um, of opposition. And uh, that is something that we, I, I strongly believe that we need to tackle. And for that, we need to realize that we are much stronger together than uh, as individual organizations or individual individuals <laughs> um, uh, on, a, on a personal level. Uh, so, what we need is a shared um, quantity of knowledge and all the experience put together and this is one of the best places to do that at, at, at a European Skeptics Congress. Um, the combined resources and efforts are very important when we are trying to achieve something on a European level and obviously we, we cannot uh, ignore the fact that EU level lobbying is something that we, we need to consider because, 
because that is that is how we could advance uh, on a, on, a, on legislative if issues. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, most of you um, agree with me that uh, ha being here and uh, having to listen to all those different talks, it gives us a lot of inspiration as well to keep doing that. Um, that is why I don't think it's enough for us to gather every second year. Uh, but how to do that? How to go international? How to, how to elevate this whole thing to a whole new, whole new international level? One of them is the conferences and events, uh, conferences like this, the European Skeptics Congress, but there are other options um, that, that, that you can um, possibly see. QED, uh, which happens um, in, in, in only a couple of weeks from now, um, that's a very successful international event. Uh, there used to be a TEM in Europe as well. I don't know if, if, you've, if you've heard about that or if you attended that. Um, and obviously, there are lots of skeptics in the pub events across Europe that we could um, tell each other about and, and that we could even attend when we are visiting other countries. So there is a whole lot of networking to do. Tem, it's the amazing meeting. Uh, the amazing meeting which uh, originated from the US, the amazing meeting, a name comes from uh, the, na the name of the amazing Randy. So um, it was the, the James Randy Educational Foundation who pulled it off um, and, and it, it was organized for a couple of years. Um, so, there are other things to, to consider. Um, different co cam campaigns and projects to, to talk about. Um, there is Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia and uh, that is a truly international uh, endeavor and uh, I, I strongly recommend everyone to participate in it if they have an inclination to um, edit Wikipedia articles. It's a whole lot of fun and you guys can make a huge difference with that. So uh, Susan Gerbic will give a talk and um, she's available um, all weekend to, to, to discuss that. She's the leader of that. Uh, you probably remember 2011, there was a, a two, uh, 1023 homeopathy nothing in it campaign, a hugely successful, sorry it sounded like Donald Trump. Uh, <laughs> it was huge, um, it, it really was huge, uh, but what, what I'd like to say about, uh, uh, about that is, is that the, the most important thing about it is was, that, was that it was truly international. Um, uh, the, the whole globe was, was moved by it. Okay, that means that only a couple of people from different countries, but even in Antarctica, on Antarctica, that was a person overdosing with uh, homeopathy. Um, <laughs> that was just brilliant. There is a, an, another international endeavor that, that's called All Trials which is a campaign run by Sense About Science, which, uh, the, an organization which is represented uh, this weekend by um, Sophie Van Turnut, uh, who's, who's running uh, Sense About Science EU, um, and she's gonna give a talk um, later uh, this, this morning. And uh, they are running Evidence, uh, they were running uh, Evidence Matters EU, which was um, a brilliant, a brilliant, very good um, initiative as well. But we need something more than that. We need an umbrella organization, something that can take care of a lot of um, other different uh, um, tasks that, that we, we are facing when we, we'd like to tackle uh, all those uh, different issues. So we need to unite uh, different organizations in a way. We need to have an organization that provides administrative support uh, and operates in an international, truly international EU level. It organizes events. It supports and encourages different p uh, uh, actions and educate, ed educates EU legislators which are, because there are people sitting in, the, e in the, the, the European Parliament, the European Council, the European Commission. Those people from time to time make decisions about stuff that they have no idea about. Of course they, they work with experts, a lot of experts, but, but we need to formulate uh, different opinions and we need to make them aware that the public is in in the public that they they follow the 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 new waves of uh, in the public what they they follow the in the thinking uh, is not in favor of anti-gmo uh sentiment uh not unanimously at least uh and we need to make them aware that science really matters 
and uh, that needs needs of uh, that requires another thing that is lobbying. So we have EXO, the European Council of Skeptical Organizations, but I um, I highlighted a couple of things that are done by EXO, and there are a couple of things that are not, and we should address that uh, that issue. But I, I'm happy to tell you that there was a stepping stone. Uh, which was the, the 16th European Skeptics Congress in, um, in London two years ago, where there was an EXO meeting that was truly, truly inspirational in a way. Uh, there were ideas and an action plan of, um, of, of changing our communication and do something about the whole thing, and an operational reform as well. That did not happen in the end, but the, the communicational reform did kind of happen. And an idea of a blog or a podcast as well uh, emerged, which was acted upon uh, by the three of us, uh, Pontus, Yelena, and myself. And the first episode of that podcast came out on, in, uh, on the 18th of November 2015. And we are pr very proud of that, but we decided not to do it as uh, because we, we had no, uh, we, we were not um, l connected um, that that um, closely to uh, EXO, and it would have required an EXO decision to, to become um, an, an EXO podcast. So we decided we're just going to name it an, the European Skeptics Podcast. And uh, with a, it, it, is, uh, it has a truly European focus. It, it um, covers news from all over Europe. It, it uh, um, runs interviews with spokespeople of, um, of uh, the, the movement internationally. Um, we are telling everyone about events happening across Europe. There are lots of them, believe us. And uh, yeah, you just need to believe. You're skeptics, right? And, uh, and uh, different segments to educate and, uh, and provide some discourse on uh, different topics. And uh, this, is, this is us, <laughs> the three of us. And in the, in the last two years of running the show, we are coming up to the 100th episode uh, very soon. We are close to 100,000 downloads so far. And uh, we have listeners from more than 50 countries uh, with more than 50 interviews that we have conducted from people, uh, 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 with people from more than 20 countries. And um, a, lot, a lot more are planned. So watch out because you never know when we are approaching you for an interview uh, while you're here at the European Skeptics Congress. And um, um, this is what else we, we uh, did. We are very proud of that. And that is an event calendar of the different European um, um, events happening across Europe. And uh, we are very proud to, to, uh, to let you know that we have been nominated twice for the very prestigious Occam's Award uh, for, for in, the, in the best podcast category. So everyone is, uh, we would like to thank everyone who, who cast a vote uh, for us to, to be nominated uh, or, um, or got into the, um, um, the finalist list. And, um, but I'd like to talk about in the last yeah, two minutes or so, um, I'd like to talk about uh, something else, EXO, the European Ske uh, Council of Skeptical Organizations that I uh, already briefly uh, touched on. But uh, it really was in a dormant state until until recently, um, and it still is in a way. But uh, under Gabor, Gabor Roshko's watch, uh, who is the current chairman of uh, EXO, uh, there, is, there was a, a website redesign and relaunch, uh, which I, I think it was a very good step forward. Uh, and there was an event calendar, we're very proud to, to let you know that, uh, it's our event calendar that's available on the EXO website, uh, the, 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 the ESP's uh, uh, calendar. Uh, we, have, we are operating a Facebook uh, group for uh, the representatives of different organizations uh, from across Europe, and uh, that gives us a very good or everyday platform for uh, conducting discussions and, and, and running, um, oh, letting others know about what we're doing. And uh, we are constantly recruiting new member organizations, but what for? Um, and uh, this, is, this is a new website. And the question, what, f what we are recruiting for, um, uh, raises another question. Wh where next? What, where should EXO, as, as an, an international organization, go? I'm going to give you my opinion. I'm nobody to tell you what EXO should do or has to do, but that is my opinion, what I'm going to share you, and that is what I'm finishing my, my talk with. So first of all, we need an organization that's active, 
that is active on an everyday basis. We are doing something every day. And we have to admit, and, and we cannot kid ourselves, um, if we want to achieve that, we need to, to, to step one, we make one step further and make it an organization with employees. With, with a, such a great, a, a huge, massive international organization should not be run on, a, on purely a voluntary basis because it's impossible, as we have seen in the last decades. Uh, so that requires funding. We need to find uh, ways of funding it. Uh, we need to run our own events. We need to operate databases that we can work with that, that um, include um, data of, of different tests, test results uh, conducted by different member organizations. And with that database, we could easily get into, um, um, so we could easily use it, for, well, other organizations could easily use it um, without hesitation. And uh, we need to have a database of different experts, um, a good example of which can be Sense About Science uh, that we'll uh, hear about very, very soon. Um, and uh, mentioning Sense About Science and other organizations like uh, the Humanist Association, uh, Associations um, active in Europe, um, we could uh, cooperate with these organizations to, to try and achieve something truly. And, uh, of course, we should be discussing policies as well uh, to, con to, to, to connect my, whatever I'm saying, to what I already said earlier about uh, trying to achieve something in a European level, at the European Union's uh, level. And there are a lot of other things that we could, we could do, but we need to reform uh, the way EXO operates. And uh, I'm, I'm calling for a reform of that, um, the, the details of which should be discussed um, probably at the, the Sunday EXO board meeting. I'm really hoping for that to happen. And uh, I'd like to thank you for your uh, attention. I, I'm afraid I went over my time with about two minutes. So uh, the, it was a lot of time, 15 minutes for, uh, for a talk. Thank you very much. And uh, I can see that a, a lot of people has, have arrived uh, since I started. So. Uh, have a wonderful day today. Thank you very much.